In this video, we're going to give a few elements of classification for our PDEs. First, let me talk about the order of a PDE. Well, as you would expect, it's simply determined by the term with the highest derivatives. So if you look at this equation, for instance, du over dt minus du over dx equals f, well, that would be a first order PDE uh, because the highest dimension, the highest derivative, well, it's uh, one uh, derivative in, in t and one derivative in x. We don't go to the second derivative. It is a first order PDE. Uh, if you look at this uh, equation, that's minus Laplace u equals f, well, you know in the Laplace operator you have second order derivatives, so that would be a second order PDE. Uh, that one would also be a second order PDE, minus Laplace operator plus del u, scalar del u equals f, again, second order PDE. Uh, this equation, which actually represents the, uh, is used to model the, um, the, the, the deflection of a, of a, of a beam, uh, is actually a fourth order PDE, because you can see you have a fourth order derivative with respect to x of that, uh, um, of that uh, function w. So here's for the order of the uh, PDE, and of course there is no surprise there. Then comes the linearity. Linearity of a PDE means that it is linear in the unknown function and its derivatives. So, for instance, for the first uh, equation, that will be linear uh, because it's linear in its unknown function u and its derivative, basically its derivatives. Uh, same thing for the second equation, it's linear. Uh, because minus Laplace u, uh, well, obviously that's going to be linear. However, the third equation here is not linear because of the del u, del u. That would actually make it not linear because of the scalar product. You can just verify it's not. And the fourth uh, equation uh, is linear as well. So here's for order and linearity. Now we're going to consider d equal to 2, and we're going to consider second order linear partial differential equations. And these can be classified in either elliptic, parabolic, or hyperbolic. And here's the way we classify them. Uh, as you know, if you are in dimension 2 and you have a second order linear PDE, then we will always have this form here. And the symbol that corresponds to this will be ax1 square or x square plus bx1 x2 or bx y, if you prefer, plus c y y square plus dx plus cy plus f. Th that will be the symbol of that PDE. And again, either you go with x1, x2, or x and y, it doesn't really matter. Now, this symbol equal to zero will be the equation of a conic section. And depending on b squared minus 4ac, that uh, conic section will either be an ellipse, a parabola, or an hyperbola. And uh, well, what we'll do is we'll say that the PDE uh, will be elliptic, if b squared minus 4ac is negative, parabolic if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, provided that a, b, c are not all three uh, equal to zero, and hyperbolic if b squared minus 4ac is positive. Let me give you an example if uh, you consider Laplace operator u equals f. Well, that will be obviously elliptic, for the reason we explained earlier. Now, if you actually uh, want, you, you could want to extend uh, this classification to higher order linear PDEs and nonlinear PDEs and possibly uh, higher dimensions as well. Well, in dimension three, we will say that um, minus Laplace u equal f is also an elliptic PDE, or Laplace u equal f is an elliptic PDE. That is uh, something we'll say. Um, basically, um, well, I mean, at this point, elliptic, parabolic, and hyperbolic look like a piece of trivia, and you're like, okay, why not? I mean, we understand why linearity is important. We understand why um, we'd be interested in knowing the order of the PDE, but why this classification, why is this even important? Uh, well, the reason is um, because the, the solution will behave actually pretty differently and the regularity will be pretty different in all three cases. Um, basically, elliptic is really going to be the easiest case. Uh, parabolic is going to be uh, a little bit more complicated. And hyperbolic is something which is usually 
uh, pretty nasty. So um, this is uh, related to the characteristics that we'll just talk quickly about in uh, the video uh, 3.2 uh, in, in the, in the, in which is coming up, but we won't get into, into a lot of details about characteristic in this class. That is something that you will do if you choose an elective class on PDE next year, and you will also discuss hyperbolic equations next year if you choose this elective class. Otherwise, this year in this class, we'll only talk about elliptic and parabolic PDEs. Now, um, parabolic and hyperbolic PDEs are usually uh, used to model um, phenomenon that will depend on time. And it's often, uh, the, obviously the, the variable which is used for this is often, uh, very often is T, and uh, for time. I mean, there is of course no, 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 no obligation for it, but that's uh, the custom. Now, we use uh, the term evolution equation when the PDE models development of the evolution in time of a system, and when it's not the case, we use the term steady state when the behavior of the system does not change over time. So if, I, if you want to consider an example, you look at the propagation of a wave, uh, it can be basically an acoustic wave, uh, uh, what I'm talking right now, that's an acoustic wave. Uh, it can be an uh, electromagnetic wave, it can be the wave uh, by, by throwing a rock um, in the lake. Uh, that is going to be a hyperbolic PDE uh, and uh, it's an evolution equation. Uh, that often, by the way, the, 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 the operator, uh, second derivative in time minus Laplace operator is often called the uh, Dalibertian, and often you, we use a square to actually represent this operator. Now, I would like to give you a few types of PD and show you what they are. If you look at this, uh, DTU equals F of TU, that will be an ODE because there is only one uh, variable with respect to which you differentiate. So that's something we discussed in chapter one. It is uh, not steady, uh, obviously, because it depends on time. Uh, if you look at minus Laplace U equals F, well, also called the diffusion uh, equation because actually is what often it models, then it is steady. The time does not play a role and the class is elliptic for reasons we just explained. If you look at DTU minus Laplace U equals F, I put an X here to just uh, emphasize that we're just doing the derivative with respect to the space variable. So the dimension D here would be well, one for time plus whatever dimension in space we have. That is a diffusion ex uh, equation uh, that is not steady, obviously, and the class would be parabolic. Then we have the transport equation, that's dTu plus V scalar gradient U equals F. Uh, it is not steady, obviously, and that would be a hyperbolic equation. Then we have the transport diffusion, uh, which is given here, which is not steady, which is parabolic. And we'll actually, um, we'll actually talk about this in, uh, in the third section of this uh, chapter. Uh, so stay tuned, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this equation uh, in, uh, in a few minutes. And then we have the wave. So here I put it in dimension one. Uh, so d is equal to two. We have one dimension in space and one dimension in time. Second derivative of u minus, uh, well, c squared, c being the celerity, the velocity. Uh, and the second derivative of u equals f. It is obviously not steady and it is an hyperbolic PDE.